Hi friends! Welcome to A Glow in the Dark. Carissa Karowski here. I am going to write probably a blog post on this too, so if you follow me everywhere, I'm sorry you're going to get saturated. Uh, I kind of had some realizations. Uh, you probably already know I'm in nursing school right now and uh, one of my classes is a mental health class. And we recently went over, um, we had a chapter on depression. Normally, I am very open about my depression. Um, I don't really get that worked up about it anymore. And I can usually talk fine without getting emotional. Uh, but for some reason, that class just it cracked open a lot of old hurts in me. Um... And the main reason is that I got to read about how mental illness should be handled. And I got to hear my instructor talk about how they handled their one of their children having depression. And it was just so beautiful the way that they handled it. It, it just made me, to be honest, kind of pissed off at what happened to me in my life and how I was treated. Um, I realized that I had so many things stacked against me. And it made me also realize that is one of the reasons I've had such a hard time seeking treatment. And maybe why I spent so many years working on overcoming depression. Um... The first thing that was stacked against me was uh, at school, I occasionally, uh, a few times, I approached my counselors about friends who um, I knew were suicidal. And from the teenage perspective, nothing was done. I remember they would talk to them and then basically... A lot of people would just deny that anything was wrong, and then they'd get sent on their way. Um, back then, uh, mental illness was just starting to be talked about. So I, I can't say that I have have any like ill will, ill feelings towards the counselors. They probably had no idea how to handle it. Um, they probably weren't prepared at all to deal with kids talking about that stuff. Um, it's much more open now than it was. But still, that didn't change the fact that nothing seemed to get done. Um, so seeing that my other friends weren't really taken seriously or nothing happened, it kind of put the seed in my head that, well, why would I tell the counselors that I'm struggling with something? Um, it didn't help my friends. Um, eventually I got the courage to tell my mom that I was depressed and that I needed to see a counselor. Um, and she did take me to one session. Uh, it was not a good fit. I, I don't remember who this woman was, but God help us if she is still in practice because I can remember telling her, um... It was very hard for me to talk about it because I, I felt guilty and I didn't feel like I had a right to be depressed. Um, so it was hard to translate all of that stuff into words. But I can remember telling her that I would have, um, like when I'd be in a car, I would always like think about it um, crashing or think about it like flying off a bridge. Basically, I was trying to tell her I was suicidal without saying I'm suicidal, okay? As a counselor, as a therapist, you should be able to pick up on that and ask questions to get the person to talk more about it. Um, but did she do that for me? No. Guess what she said to me? She said, well, everybody has thoughts like that. I swear to God that is what she told me. I will never, ever forget it. Obviously, I never forgot it. It made such a huge impact on me. Um, I And so I just felt... 
I just felt discounted. Um, I can even remember talking to my friend who was going to her that I just, I didn't feel like she took me seriously. So, um, yeah, I never went back. Um, my mom never tried to get me to go again. Um, I, I don't hold a grudge towards my mom at all. I, I think that she tried and she had her own struggles she was going through. And at that time, again, nobody really knew how to handle mental illness. But regardless, that was another point against me. Um, in making me feel like my thoughts weren't valid and that I wasn't heard and I wasn't understood. Um, I also told my boyfriend at the time who was, I thought was the love of my life. I thought I was going to marry him. So I, I had a very deep trust in him. Um, and he was one of the few people who I told about some of these issues. Um, he also just brushed it aside, told me that I just needed to, um, cheer up and I would get over it. And I don't even remember everything he told me, but basically didn't take it seriously at all. Um, when I was in college, I had a huge falling out with someone that I thought was going to be my best friend. Um, she, it's a super long story, but the end result <laughs> is that when I tried to keep the friendship going, she told me that my depression was not an excuse um, to not call her once a month or I don't know, whatever the hell she wanted me to do to keep the friendship going. Um, so she basically broke up with me as a friend, told me there was nothing left to build our friendship on. Um, so there's another point. <laughs> um, and just stuff like that on and on and on people saying things like you just need to cheer up and you just need to change your attitude um even my own spouse which again i know that people just don't know how to handle it but it all adds up and it all hurts um so anyway that whole history I didn't realize it, but it had given me the mindset that my voice didn't matter and that what I was going through wasn't valid. Um, a lot of people in high school thought that I was <laughs> a like, goody two shoes rich girl because my parents owned businesses. Um, what they didn't know is that my parents had to claim bankruptcy and um there was alcoholism in our house but still i um i never felt like my feelings were valid because i did have a pretty good life i never felt like i had a right to be depressed and that made it worse <laughs> i'm sure people out there can totally relate to this but you just you feel like you're a horrible person for being depressed. You don't have a reason to be depressed. And it just makes it all even worse. It makes you more depressed. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's all that stuff. Anyway, going through the, the class kind of made me piece all of this together. And it was an aha moment where I realized this is why I have such a hard time getting help. Um, to this day, I still talk myself out of going to therapy. I still have not tried any medications um, because I do consider myself cured of depression, um, but I still struggle with some anxiety and I've considered taking medications for that, um, but I still talk myself out of it. <laughs> and it's annoying because that's just how I've developed this pattern of like not thinking I'm worthy of getting help and not thinking that I'm going to be heard and not thinking that what I'm feeling is valid and that I need to just keep pushing and pushing and I'm strong enough to overcome it. Um, and that is definitely an attitude I got from family and culture. The fact of like, it felt like medications were a last resort. So I kept pushing myself to my last resort and it was just never going to happen. It was always like, 
when is this my last resort? Is this my last resort? Oh, I'm crying on the couch. I'm cutting. I'm um, doing all these things. Like, when is it going to be my last resort? And I still never, never took medications. Um, I still talked to myself out of therapy. And I just think, like, maybe I wouldn't have taken 15 fucking years to get over it if somebody would have stuck up for me or if I would have allowed myself to get the help that I needed. Um, but that's not what happened. And I feel fortunate that I was able to overcome it. It was ha very hard work. Um, very, very, very hard work. Um, but I, I know that not everybody is able to find the strength to overcome it. Um, so if you're wondering why it's so hard to overcome mental illness, um, why there's still stigma, well, there's my story. Um, also, therapy's expensive. Most insurances, I think Medicaid covers some of it, um, but most insurances don't cover therapy. And even if you... I would consider me and my husband pretty... We have a pretty comfortable income. Very comfortable income. Um, even for us, it's still expensive. And when you doubt that you're worthy of the help, it's so hard to justify that expense. Even though you're totally worth it. And it's needed. You just like to keep talking yourself out of it. I keep talking myself out of it. Um, another problem is that sometimes it takes a while to find a therapist that fits you. So you start to think that therapy is just not, doesn't work. Um, I, heard, I heard that from teenagers I worked with all the time. Where they just thought like therapy sucked and it, was, it just didn't help work for them. But really it was that they hadn't found a good therapist. And you can't always choose the therapist if you're stuck with a certain um, budget or insurance that pays for only a certain therapist. Sorry, I gotta adjust my focus here. So that's just one of a few things that get in the way. Um, transportation, life, having a family being busy, it's all, it's all it just gets in the way and therapy becomes that one thing, one last thing um, that you have to do. And if there's nobody sticking up for you and advocating for you and pushing you to go, it's really hard to get yourself to go. So I hope that that sheds some light and um, I don't know what else I was going to say. <laughs> I'm going to end it there because we're at a whopping 13 minutes. Um, hope you found some of this useful. If you liked my channel, subscribe, and I hope I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.